In 2018, under Nuno Espirito Santo, Wolves won the championship, getting themselves promoted back into the Premier League. And they defo held their own for a newly promoted side, even competing in the Europa League in 2020, but ever since then, it's just been downhill for Wolves. From selling big players like Ruben Neves and Diogo Jota to having three managers since the departure of Nuno, and none of them really doing a good job. I think it's time for someone to step in and take Wolves to the next level, and I know just the person for the job. That's right, guys, in today's video, I'm becoming the new gaffer of Wolverhampton Wanderers and by the end of this video I'm going to make them the best team in the world. So this is the start 11 we have got into with Wolverhampton Wanderers and even though the formation is a little bit dodgy and plays are out of position there are some balls in this squad. The first one being striker Matthias Cunha only 24 years old 78 overall and he's a very versatile player. And the other player is Pedro Neto who can play pretty much either side of the pitch he's only 23 78 overall and of course when you play for Wolverhampton Wanderers you've got to be Portuguese. And to be honest, I thought this squad was way older. There's only four players in the entire team that are 30 years old or above. We've actually got a really young squad. And as you can see from our highest rated players, there's only one player above 30 years old, and that is Jose Sarr, our goalkeeper. So I think we're pretty decent. And we actually haven't got a stupid contract situation out as well. Wolverhampton Wanderers team is pretty on point right now. I mean, obviously we'll have to do a little bit of meddling with the team, but other than that, guys, I really did underestimate this Wolverhampton Wanderers squad. Now to start, I'm switching the formation to the 4-3-3 defensive variation. We've got a couple of defensive midfielders, a centre midfielder and no attacking midfielder. So this formation is literally spot on for Wolves. And the other reason is very simple. And if you guys have watched me for a while, you'll know this. I do not use five at the back formations. Absolutely not. As for the tactical vision, I'm going for the counter-attacking style of play. We've got a defensive formation. So I reckon we soak up all the pressure and use our pace on the break every single time. And I reckon it'll work. And after meddling around with the team and sorting the formation, now, this is by a mile the strongest starting 11 we can feel to begin with, and we haven't even spent any money yet, and I think it looks way better than what we started with. Now, speaking of money, we're looking pretty decent financially. 50 million to start our journey off with Wolverhampton Wanderers, but if you've seen the title, you know it's not going to be that straightforward. As you guys know, Wolves are known for having a lot of Portuguese players playing for their team, so we're going to follow that exact same principle because we are only allowed to sign Portuguese players in this video. And I've got to admit, looking at their squad overall, I'm not seeing too many Portuguese players, so they may have calmed down with only signing Portuguese players lately. But remember guys, we've got 50 million in our budget, so we're going to turn that right around and bring in a lot of Portuguese talent. But this doesn't say we have to get rid of any non-Portuguese players in the team, because I think if we did that, we'd be left with about 5 players, and obviously that just wouldn't work out well, would it? Now the problem I've got right now is this team overall is so young, I kind of want to give them one season to show me what they've got, but we've got 50 million for God's sake, I've got to spend it somewhere. And that leads me to Huang He Chan on the left-hand side of the pitch. He's 27 years old and 78 overall. Granted, he's still young and can grow a bit, but I'm just going to show you his development plan. As you can see, it'll take 180 weeks for him to become a 79-rated player. And obviously, this is the beginning of our journey with Wolves, but we simply can't have that. Especially when the players around him are all going to be massively improving over the course of this season. So I feel like we either get a left winger or we try to somehow make a player in the team already a left winger and we bring in a striker instead. Luckily though, our striker Cunha will only take two weeks to convert to a left winger. That means we can drop Huang Ki Chan to the bench and we can bring in a Portuguese striker. And I think you all know who I'm gunning for. That's right, guys. Cristiano Ronaldo is the player I'm talking about. 38 years old, 86 overall. He is one of the greatest players to ever set foot onto a football pitch. And I'm bringing him to Wolves. And just like that, for 26 million flat, we have just signed the second greatest player of all time. And there he is, guys, in the Wolves kit wearing that number 7 shit. I bet that's a sight you all ramped to Wonder fans never thought you'd see. Now we do still have 21 million in our budget but with the team being as young as it is and having as much potential as it's got I kind of want to leave it alone for season 1 to see how it does on its own so I'm not going to spend a penny more. But one thing I am going to do is convert Cunha to a left wing is going to become a 79 rated overall player so to be fair he's better off on the wing than he is up top. And that does leave the starting 11 looking like this going into our first season with Wolves and honestly guys I reckon and we're going to smash it. Like we just said, this team overall is very young and got a lot of potential in it. And not only that, they've got one of the greatest goal scorers of all time as their striker. I feel like this season we're going to do just fine. And guess what? I was absolutely right. We are smack bang mid-table, 10th in the league at the end of our first season in charge of Wolverhampton Wanderers. I think we've done pretty damn good. I mean, we are quite a long way from getting European football. We're at least 15 points away from the top six. But you know what? It's our first season. Let's take baby steps. 
But in our first season, we make it to round five of the FA Cup, only losing to Man City. That is a bloody good start. But Bournemouth knock us out of the Carabao Cup in round two. Great stuff. But I've got to admit, guys, the overall improvements in this team is pretty damn impressive, especially the midfield trio, man. I didn't really expect these guys to shine as much as the rest, but they've definitely done their job. As for the stats, a 39-year-old Ronaldo is our top goal scorer. 21 goals, 6 assists, and 43 games. I'm not the biggest CR7 fan, but I can't lie. That is absolutely ridiculous for someone who's almost 40. But the good news is we've already laid the foundations for success for Wolves, man. We've only made one signing and messed around with the tactics a little bit, and we've already finished inside the top 10. I think that's a great start. And as much as this team has improved over the course of this season, I already know where I'd like to make improvements next year. The only two things I'm hoping that happen is A, we've got a better budget and B, these Portuguese players in these positions better than the ones already in them. Well, going into season two, we've definitely got a better budget. 82 million to be precise, man. Financially, we are absolutely sound. Now, this is the current team in our second year in charge and right now, we've only skipped a couple of weeks into the season and all already a couple of players have already improved but having said that there are improvements that need to be made for example Gomez is one of them 77 overall 25 years old he can still improve but he's the weakest link in that back four right now we do also need a better keeper than Jose sorry he's 31 years old now it doesn't look like he's going to grow to 80 overall so a new keeper would definitely be beneficial to us I mean just look at the midfield up guys we've got a very good striker a couple of decent wingers and a couple of decent DMs we just need to replace Balgar with an attacking midfielder this way, we're able to change the formation to the 4-3-1 narrow formation, which is way better for counter-attacking. And I feel like once we do this, we'll do way better this season in the Prem. But 82 million will only go so far when you're trying to bring in Portuguese talent. So I feel like we start with the goalkeeper because that is the most important part of the pitch. And let's be honest, guys, there's only one goalkeeper up for the job, and that is Diogo Costa. He's only 24, 85 overall. He is levels above Jose. So this one just makes sense. But guys, trust me, he was cheap we've just had to fork out just over 63 million to sign him up for wolves on a four-year deal but i absolutely believe he'll be worth it now that does leave us with 15 million to spend and i reckon we can bring in one more player now obviously i would like a better center back than gomez but i don't feel like 15 million is enough to bring in a center back so we'll take care of that next year as for balgard however there is one attacking midfielder who is portuguese i reckon i can just about afford to bring into wolverhampton wanderers squad and that is, of course, Fabio Carvello, who is currently on loan to RB Leipzig at the minute in real life. But after this transfer window in season two, I'm hoping that he's a permanent player for Wolves. But there's a slight issue. He's worth between 18 and 14 mil. So if we are to do this, I reckon a player swap deal's on the cards. Now, I'm going to try to use Balgard in a straight player swap deal. There's only 500,000 between them, so Jurgen Klopp may go for this. And he's actually gone for... What a mug. Why would you accept a player half a million less than the player I'm going for that you've got man what an absolute mug and there he is guys in the Wolverhampton Wanderers kit 21 years old 77 overall a straight swap deal for Balgard and he now plays for us and granted we do still have 13 mil left in the budget but with the business that we've conducted already this year I'm very happy to leave the transfer window as it is but before the transfer window was over I did send a bunch of these players out on loan but there's one in particular I've got very high hopes for and that is Fabio Silver he's 22 he's 76 overall I know that this guy isn't the most popular Wolverhampton Wanderers player but I'm hoping that next season he'll be Ronaldo's replacement because Ronaldo is indeed retiring at the end of this season and I'm hoping that once Silva comes back from his loan move he'll be ready to take that starting 11 spot off him but I do have a plan B and Goncalo Cadez he's a pretty decent player himself but he's like five years older than Silva so I'm hoping that Silva can be the guy to do it but if not Goncalo Cadez will be the guy but guys going into season two this is how the Wolverhampton Wanderers teams looks and obviously there's still weaknesses up and down the pitch but I reckon for the most part we've definitely made the right improvements. I mean Gomez is definitely one of the weakest links in the team but he's only 25 still. There is a chance he could prove me wrong and massively improve this year. But one player I'm expecting big things from this year is Carvalho. He's only 77 rated granted but he's 21. I am really putting my faith in this guy that he can carry us somewhat this year. Now last season we finished 10th in the league smack bang mid table but since then we've improved the formation, we've improved the team so he's hoping that we can creep up the table just a little bit this year. But that's 
not exactly what happened. We finished 11th in the Prem this year, one place below where we did last season. And ironically, even though we've done everything we can to improve it, we've done worse. I think when season three comes around, we've got to go back to the drawing board and figure out what went wrong. But this time we got to the quarters of the FA Cup, man. How can we do so well in the FA Cup or not do well in the Premier League? That don't make sense to me. And we also made the quarters of the Carabao Cup. That's unheard of for me. Normally I do well in the league and do poorly domestically, but now it's the other way around. And when you look at the team overall, I've got to be honest with you, I don't know how we've done so poorly this year. Obviously, a mid-table finish isn't exactly the worst thing in the world, but with the team we've got, we should definitely be getting a top eight finish. And yes, before anybody comments, I did realise we have Bueno on the bench and he's way better than Gomez. I realised that just after season two actually begun. As for the stats, CR7's the top dog again. 25 goal contributions and 41 games. Considering this guy's 40 and retiring at the end of this season, that is genuinely out of this world. But I've got to be honest, after doing everything in my power in season two to finish higher than we did last year to end up finishing lower than we did last year, that's a little bit worrying. There's obviously some issues in this team that we've got to fix in season three. The problem is, I don't exactly know what they are, so I'm in a little bit of a pickle right now. But before we go any further, guys, if you're enjoying the video so far, make sure you leave it a big old thumbs up and smash that subscribe button. We are literally this close to hitting 50,000 subscribers. So we've just arrived in season three with Wolves, and as you guys can see, the reason that we aren't doing so well is definitely not the coaching system, because I've definitely kept on top of this. If anything, guys, the coaching system is one of the reasons why we've seen so much growth from pretty much every single one of these players. The good news, however, guys, somehow we've got just under 100 million to spend on Portuguese players to improve the team overall, so no matter what happens in season three, we've got to do better than 11th in the league. Now, for the most part, guys, I am happy with the team as it is. There's just two positions I feel Feel like we do need to focus on from a more tactical point of view. The first one being Nelson Semedo. Granted, he's 80 overall and one of the best players in the team, but he's also 31 years old. We aren't going to get much out of him, so I reckon we go for a younger and better Portuguese fullback. We also need to replace Lamina in this DM role as well. I mean, he's 79 overall and he's 31 years old. He's the weakest link in the team, and I reckon once we sort these positions out, we'll definitely do better this year. And to be fair, guys, 98 mil should be more than enough to bring in a DM and a right back that are Portuguese. The question is, who the hell am I going to go for? But it didn't take me long to find a fullback. I went for United's Diogo Dalo. He's 26 years old, 83 overall. He is levels above Nelson Semedo and for 24.6 million on the dot, he is now playing for Wolves. And this leaves us with 70 million, more than enough to bring in a very good DM and I know just the player for the job. That would be Florentino from Benfica. He's only 25, 83 overall. Granted, he's not the fastest player in the world, but he's got the defensive and physical stats to make up for that. He will be a perfect fit at Wolves. And just like that, guys, for 42.4 million on the dot, Florentino is the latest addition to the squad. Now that leaves us with 23 mil remaining in our budget, and I reckon that leaves us with one more transfer to make. And I think we go for a better centre-back than either Kilman or Bueno, man. I think it's about time we levelled up our defence just a little bit more. And I think Goncalo and Nacho would be the perfect replacement for either one of them. He's 82 overall, he's 23, but he's worth between 50 and 40 million so if we are to make this happen, we're going to have to be bloody good at negotiating. Now, I'm offering 16 and a half million alongside Kilman. They probably won't go for this, but it's nice to test the war to see what they think of it. They don't want Kilman, they want 38.8 million. Okay, let's try another player. This time I've gone all out 17 and a half million, Santiago Bueno, and a 25% selling clause. If this doesn't work, we may as well kick it in the head. Yeah, they're sticking to the guns, they don't want to sell him. Unfortunately, guys, we won't be able to bring in another centre back until next season. But one thing I have been able to do is send a bunch of players out on loan, guys, including a couple of starting 11 players. The likes of our fullback Ray and out Nuri, the likes of our second choice striker Sasa, and of course, our starting 11 striker Goncalo Gadej. This is because I want players like Fabio Silva to really step up to the plate. In this game, he's got a lot of potential, and I'm hoping that now he's got the chance to play, he'll definitely fulfill it. And to be fair, the same goes for Hugo Bueno. I mean, away from the club, he's really grown well, so hopefully now that he's in the starting 11, he can grow even better. But this is the team going into season three and I've got to be honest I'm taking a couple of risks here putting faith in Silva and Bueno when they are weaker than the alternatives but I reckon this year we bounce back in the Prem man we've got a lot of quality in the team and 
let's be real, we got to play pretty damn poorly to do worse than we did last year. And guys, we definitely haven't done worse than last year. We are top four in the Premier League, man. We have got Champions League football for season four. Now, believe me, I knew for a fact we'd do better than we did last year, but I did not expect a top four finish. I'd have settled for a top six finish. And not only that, we've won our first trophy in charge of Wolverhampton Wanderers, winning the FA Cup, battering Everton in the final. But the bottle jobs knocked us out of the Carabao Cup, man. We may have made the semi-finals, but getting knocked out by them is just inexcusable in my opinion. And to top it off, the actually bloody worry. United, you literally had one job. One job. But looking at our team, guys, it looks like our team did the job as well. Look at the improvement in some of these plays, man. What a season. I mean, Diogo Costa is 91 rated, 87 rated Florentino, 86 rated Mithoes Cunha. Diogo Dell has gone up to 85 rated as well. But my personal favourite is Fabio Silva, 83 rated at 23 years old. I knew putting my faith in this guy was the right call to make. And it defo was the right call to make. 36 goal contributions in 50 games for his first time in the starting 11. What a player. I know he's not popular with you Wolverhampton Wanderers fans, but you can't deny how good he's performed this year. And overall, guys, the team's done amazing. Top four in the Premier League, FA Cup winners. I couldn't have asked for more from them. Now it's just a case of making sure this team's ready for the Champions League. These are a couple of positions we need to focus on, but rest assured, next season we'll take care of that straight away. And season four's budget will definitely help us sort out those problems. 185 million is what we've got to spend this year. I do not know how we've accumulated that much. All I can say is the Wolves Board of Directors must bloody love me. Now, looking at the starting 11, guys, I feel like we've got a fantastic squad in our hands. I mean, we got top four with it last year in the Prem, for God's sake. That's how good it is. But if we're to take the Champions League seriously this year, we need better centre backs than both Kilman and Bueno. They've both been incredible for us since we took charge of Wolverhampton Wanderers, but now we need to level these positions up. And financially, as you guys know, we've got no issues whatsoever, and there's only two centre backs I can think of that I can replace both Kilman and Bueno with. One of which is Goncharlo and Nacho. He's 24, 84 rated. He's still playing for Mallorca. We failed to sign him last year, but this year we're going to have no issue signing him. And his partner will be Antonio Silva from Wolfsburg. He's only 22, already 83 overall. I swear to God, guys, these pair are going to make an absolutely fantastic centre-back partnership. And for the grand total of 100 million flat, we have signed both Goncharlo and Nacho and Antonio Silva on four-year contracts. And that still leaves us with 76 million in our budget. Now the starting 11 now with the addition of Silva and Inaccio looks absolutely fantastic and I've got no doubt in my mind that they'll go from 84 and 83 rated to high 80s by the end of this season anyway. But as you guys see, we've got a lot of money to spend so I think getting a replacement goalkeeper for Saar and a replacement midfielder for Triore is the way to spend that money. I mean Saar's 33 years old, he's not going to get any better and I feel like there's definitely a better and younger Portuguese goalkeeper out there somewhere that we can buy. And on the bench guys, we haven't really got an attacking midfielder so bring Bringing one in for Triore would definitely be a smart move. But to be fair, we don't know how much these plays are going to cost us. We do only have 76 million, so we'll take this step by step. And the first step is bringing in a better second choice goalkeeper. And the goalkeeper I found is a damn good one at that. Luis Maximiano is 27, 81 rated, was one of my favourite goalkeepers back in FIFA 23. And for 20 million on the dot, he's now our second choice goalkeeper at Wolves. As for the backup midfielder, I'm going for Matthias Nunes. He's 27, 84 rated he recently joined man city in real life but we're bringing him back home to wolves in this video and for 42 and a half million he's our last transfer of season four which means our transfer window is done which leaves the team looking like this heading into our fourth year with wolves and i've got to say guys i feel like we're gonna have a very successful campaign this time i mean last season we finished in the top four when originally i'd have been happy for top six i reckon we've got a genuine shot at the title this year and that's not even taking into account what we can do in the champions league now speaking of the champions league we're in great be alongside Dortmund, Ajax and Slavia Praha. Now Ajax and Slavia Praha I reckon will do alright against Dortmund are the big threat in this group. Now this is Wolves first European competition since 2020 since they were in the Europa League. This is the Champions League. This is a massive step up. So whilst we do have a stupid amount of quality in this team I'm not expecting massive amounts of success in this competition. You never know we could do but with a lack of experience it's very unlikely. Now season 4 is done in Dusty Borough being met with this email in regards to dress in room unrest. Now, I've got mods running so I can't get set, but the fact that we've received this email, I'm actually dreading to see how badly we've done this year. Okay, there's something wrong with this game, man. We are third in the Premier League. We finished higher than we did last year, for God's sake. Now, granted, the bottle jobs have won the league and I'm not happy about that either, but there's no room for dressing room upset over that. I feel like the players need to 
actually get a grip of themselves because third in the league, I feel like Wolverhampton Wanderers fans would bloody love it if that happened in real life. We also beat Man City to win the Community Shield. Yeah, real dressing room unrest right there, isn't they? We also made the semi-finals of the FA Cup. Now, granted, we did only make it to round three of the Carabao Cup, but so far we've won the Community Shield, top four in the Prem and semi-finalist in the FA Cup. So unless we didn't register a single point in the group stage of the Champions League, I do not know what the players are moaning about. No, we actually finished second in the group stage, qualifying for the round of 16, so it looks like we've got a bunch of prima donnas in our team now. We've also made the quarters after beating Juve 4-3 in the round of 16. But we did get knocked out by AC Milan in the quarters, so unless that's what they're moaning about, I really don't understand what the fuss is about. I mean, for the most part, they all look pretty happy. Not only that, they've massively improved this year, man. I'm pretty sure that email was a glitch. I'm absolutely convinced it was a glitch. Now look at the stats of the team man, especially Fabio Silva 41 goal contributions in 54 games. That's tremendous. Carvalho gained 31 goal contributions. Pedro Neto gained 26. I mean Cunha didn't really perform all that well but it looks like Carvalho, Silva and Neto really carried the boatload anyway. But this year I'm especially happy. Quarter finals in the Champions League, semi finals in the FA Cup. We won the Community Shield and we got a top 4 position in the Prem once again man. I really can't ask for much more. But now that this team has got Champions League experience first and they know exactly what they're getting themselves into next year and I reckon that may just be enough for us to get to the final. Now season 5 has just come around and we've got over 200 million in our budget. The biggest problem is I don't really know where to put that money. I mean I don't really want to mess with the starting 11 at all if I'm being honest. Every single position is covered even our weekly sling Bueno is 84 rated. That's how good it is. Instead I'm going to look towards the bench. I mean we've got Lamina, we've got Wanky, Chan are both definitely weaknesses in their squad. I'll be real though, once we brought in better players for each of these positions, I think I'm going to leave the transfer window there because it's pointless spending money on a team that just simply doesn't need it. So starting with the backup winger, I'm going for Pedro Conchalves from Sporting. He's almost 30 years old granted, but he's 85 overall. If anything happens to Pedro Neto or Cunha, he can definitely fill their spot for the time being. As for the backup midfielder, Bernardo Silva is the man for the job. He's 32 years old, he's 88 overall, he's won the Champions League so he knows what it takes to win that competition. And more importantly, he's playing for Tottenham Hotspur. A player of his calibre should be nowhere near that dead club, so we're going to save him from it. And for the combined total of £125.2 million, we have signed both Bernardo Silva and, of course, Pedro Conchalves. And that does leave us with £77 million. Now, of course, we could spend that on even more Portuguese players, but sometimes just because you've got the money to spend doesn't mean you have to spend it. So that means the starting 11 looks like this, heading into our fifth year in charge of Wolves and let's be honest guys the bench doesn't look that bad at all either does it? We've also got Bernardo Silva in the team, a Champions League winner himself and that definitely bodes well for our chances in that competition. But not only do I want to do well in the Champions League this year, I want to win the Premier League title. This team has definitely got the quality in it to win the entire damn thing. But as for the group stage of the Champions League, we're in Group B alongside Real Madrid, Monaco and FCSB and let's be honest guys, this may be a little bit more difficult than last year's group stage and we just about got out of that. But we are now five seasons in with this Wolverhampton Wanderers team and we have built an absolute monstrosity. The question is, is it good enough to go all the way in the Champions League this year? Well, I don't know about the Champions League yet, but I know that we were good enough to win the Prem title this year. Manchester City ran riot, losing four games from 38. That's just unbelievable, man. I mean, we have finished second, so we should be proud of ourselves for that, but Manchester City, they're on a different planet, aren't they? We also only made it to round three of the FA Cup. And in the Carabao Cup, Ipswich knocked us out in round three as well. So domestically, we were absolutely atrocious. I hope we haven't carried this form in the Champions League. Otherwise, we're out in the group stage. Thankfully, that's not the case as we went six games undefeated, five wins, one draw, 16 points. We cruised to the round of 16. And there, we quite comfortably beat Barcelona to get to the quarters. And that's where we batter into 5-3 on aggregate. We could be playing Newcastle, Leipzig, Man City. Oh, please be Man City and let us get our bloody revenge on them. It wasn't City, it was Leipzig but we destroyed them 4-1 in the semis but the good news is we're playing Man City in the final after they simply thrashed Newcastle. They beat us by a landslide to win the Premier League title but now we got our chance to beat them to win the biggest one you can win at club level the Champions League. And judging by the stats guys, we've had a corker of a season. 36-7 for Silva 19-11 for Neto, 13-6 for Cunha, 12-5 for Carvalho even Bueno getting in on the action as well and he's a bloody fullback. And 
And this is the team going into the Champions League final against Manchester City. And I'm not going to lie to you, City must have a pretty special team to be beating this team to the Premier League by the margin that they did. I mean, we've legit got more players in the starting 11 who are 90 rated or above than aren't 90 rated or above. Do you know how mad that is to do in five seasons? Well, unfortunately, in these five seasons so far, we've only won two trophies with Wolves. Those being the FA Community Shield and, of course, the FA Cup. But we have a golden opportunity to win Wolves, their first ever for European competition. All we have to do is get past our arch nemesis in this video, Manchester City. Oh, Man City are through early in Holland. Oh, my days. Just like that, we're 1-0 down. It's not even 10 minutes into the game. It's a beautiful ball through. I don't even know what that is. Maybe Phil Foden, but Holland only needs one touch, just like in real life, and it's in the back of the net. Not the start we were after. We really need to wake up and smell the coffee, man. Man City are no joke. Here we come on the right-hand side with Fabio Silva. I'm pretty sure he's right right footed oh my god look at him go on the right foot oh my god bro i don't care if he's not popular with you wolverhampton wanderers fans he's popular with me did you see what he just did he legit picks up the ball at halfway line just goes past city's defense like they're not even there and smacks it into the left hand side of the goal bang get in alandro balde on the ball i tell you what we're dispositioning city so nicely but then again they're doing the exact same thing to us silver is on the ball now though we've got a lot of space to run into a second goal is on the card we're gonna power shot this bang get oh my oh jesus i could not tell for the life of me then if that keeper saved it or if it went in it looked proper dodgy from this angle let's take another look at it I still can't frigging tell if he saved it or not. But honestly, guys, I'm not really that bothered. All I care about is that scoreline, and right now it's in our favour. Bueno's on the ball now, early in the second half. We've got the bit between the teeth now. We're playing some really nice football. I say that, and we just give it straight away to them, don't we? Neto is on the corner. Let's go and do a little bit different this time. Fabio Silva on the outside of the... Oh, I'll tell you what, it's a nice... Okay, what's just happened there? It's a handball! Oh, my days. I love that handball rule when it goes in my favour. The question question is, was it handball? I really can't tell from... Oh, I don't know about that, you know. We're going to do a little VAR. Oh, yes, it does indeed. The VAR comes in clutch and Alejandro Balde definitely did handball it. We've got to put it away now, though. Fabio Silva, the man, the myth, the legend. Top left and he completes his hat trick. I'm pretty sure he scored two goals in this game or whatever. I don't care. He's just scored us our third goal in this game. That's for certain. Dallas on the ball. Now, look at this from him. Oh, he's just done them defense. Is like they're not even there. Oh, this is beautiful. Pedro Neto cut inside left nope. foot. Shot. Oh, that's such a weak shot. Man City to that title from us, man. And I really wanted to win that this year. So you better believe we are gunning for him with everything we've got. We're going to take a shot with Silva. Another save. Here come Man City. They're not out of the game just yet. Haaland is on the ball. The big Norwegian goal scoring machine is on the ball. Can we close him down? I don't think we can. Raspador is on the ball now. We need to do something about this. Oh, no, we don't like this. Don't like this. Great keeping. Oh, my God. God. Here come Man City once again. Are they going to get a consolation goal? He's got it to Haaland. Haaland. Oh, yes. That's it. Oh, my God. Not even a consolation goal. Diogo Costa is absolutely fantastic. That is the full-time whistle with Portuguese players only. We have made Wolverhampton Wanderers the best team in the world. And it only took us five seasons, to be fair. For the most part, Wolverhampton Wanderers on this game have got a crack team. And that is the end of this video. Do let me know if you want me to do more challenges like this in the comments down below. But if you want to watch another video, just click right here.